Okay, so how well do you actually understand basic math? Well, if you have pretty strong basic math skills, this should be a very easy problem to solve without the aid of a calculator. All right, so let's take a look at this problem. We have negative two, parentheses, negative four, plus, then we have this vertical bar right here. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what this means just yet because I wanna give you a full opportunity for you to solve this problem all on your own. But uh, let's continue on. We have negative three minus a negative seven, then another vertical bar right here, parentheses. Now this is a multiple choice question and let's take a look at our answers here. So A is negative one, B is eight, C is 26 and D is zero. All right, now once again, no calculators, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I will solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now before I show you the answer, let's take another look at this problem. Now, I uh, really strongly recommend that if you really want to do this problem, don't try to do this in your head. Take a piece of paper out and just write out the steps and you don't have to rush through this thing as well. And that's really the best way to approach this problem because if there was something that you didn't understand or if you make an error, of course, I'll explain this in a second. But uh, one more time, we have negative two parentheses, negative four plus, and then we have a vertical bar here and a vertical bar here. So really what we need to do is all this stuff inside these two vertical bars, that's negative three minus and minus seven, then end parentheses. All right, so let's take a look at the right answer. The correct answer to this problem is D zero. All right, now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and A plus a 100% and a certificate of excellence because you appear to be a certified professional expert in a few areas of basic math. All right, now what are these areas? Well, one of which is you gotta know a thing or two about positive and negative numbers to do this problem. Now, the next thing that you need to know is the order of operations. Now in math, when you have things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, these are called mathematical operators. And when you have a math problem with more than one operator, you need to know the correct order uh, to uh, do the problem in, or, or you're gonna get the problem wrong. So that is the order of operations. So you must have uh, done this, or must know a thing or two about the order of operations. Now, there is a um, acronym, uh, that is PEMDAS, that tells us the correct order of operations. I'll explain this in just one second. But the third thing that you need to know about this problem is what these vertical bars are right here. And what we're talking about is the absolute value function. All right, so we have absolute value and order of operations and positive and negative numbers. And uh, this does fall in the realm of basic math and this is not that difficult to do, especially without a calculator. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. And uh, I don't wanna make this uh, video too long because we, we're talking about three main things here. We're talking about positive and negative numbers. Uh, we're talking about the order of operations, PEMDAS, this is the acronym right here. I'll, I'll quickly explain this in just one second. And then we're talking about the absolute value function. Now, uh, let's just go to positive and negative numbers. Now, if you really wanna learn about positive and negative numbers, you need to know, um, well, really positive and negative numbers fall under, for, uh, for the most part, in most math courses, like let's say like pre-algebra or something like that, something called the real number system. Okay, so we're talking about the real number line. So we have zero in the middle, and then we have positive numbers this way and negative numbers uh, this way. But if you wanna know about uh, positive and negative numbers, really learn this stuff, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. Matter of fact, all these concepts that we're gonna discuss in this prompt, you can uh, check out additional videos on my YouTube channel on positive and negative numbers, order of operations, and absolute value function, or check out one of my full main math courses. Uh, there'll be links to those in the description of this video. But again, we're talking about uh, basic math skills here. We're not uh, getting into you know, advanced algebra or nothing like that. 
Okay, so positive and negative numbers all explain, you know, um, you know, some basic things about uh, positive and negative numbers as we get into the problem. Now, PEMDAS is an acronym that gives us the correct order of operations. Now, as I indicated, when you have a math problem with more than one operation, you have to take the correct order. So P stands for, well, let me just kind of back up here. This is a checklist that goes from left to right. So P stands for parentheses. So if we have parentheses or any other grouping symbols, we're going to start there. So you can see we have some parentheses, so we need to kind of start here. Okay, so uh, that's kind of a hint on what we're going to be doing. Now E uh, comes next. That is powers or exponents, so like 2 to the third power, this little 3 up in the top right. Matter of fact, let me draw that a little bit bigger. This little 3 right there is called the exponent part of the power. That's what the E stands for. Now, the next thing that you're going to do is MD. That's multiplication or division. Whatever you see first from left to right, this is a really confused thing for a lot of uh, part of the order of operations for a lot of people. So if you see multiplication, then division, you're going to do that. But if you have division and then multiplication, you're going to do that because you see division first from left to right. And then addition and subtraction work the same way. All right, so the last thing we need to know about this problem is absolute value, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in just one second. Okay, so as I get into the flow of the solution here, if there's anything that you don't understand, just make a mental note and follow through by watching some more of my videos or just getting some help somewhere else because, you know, we are talking about some basic math and you really want to understand all this stuff. But let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right, so here is our problem. And uh, let's start right here, okay? So matter of fact, I kind of already indicated that we want to consider the order of operations. So we're going to be thinking about PEMDAS, right? So the first thing is, hey, do we have any parentheses in this problem? Indeed we do, and uh, they're right here. So this means that we need to do everything inside of the parentheses before we even think about bringing this negative 2 into the problem. All right, so the next thing is, do we have... Uh, any exponents? Do we have any powers? Well, we do not. Okay, so we kind of skip that part. Now, do we have any multiplication or division? Uh, yes, we do. This is actually right here is multiplication, but it's outside of parentheses. Okay, it's outside of the parentheses, so we're not going to deal with it yet. Remember, uh, the parentheses part of the order of operations is really focusing in inside of the parentheses like its own separate little math problem. Okay, so we're not going to deal with this just yet. But uh, we do have addition and subtraction. Uh, and of course, this is addition right here. Then we have some subtraction right here. But uh, before we even get into any of this, what we have to do is address this absolute value function, okay? Because all of this right here represents one value. So we're going to have to take care of this before we can add it to negative four. Okay, so we have the absolute value. That's what this bar right here means absolute value of negative three minus a minus seven. So what does this mean? Well, let's just talk about absolute value in general, and then we'll do this math here in a second, and then take the absolute value of the result of uh, this math. But uh, what is the absolute value? Well, uh, let me just go ahead and give you a quick example. So the absolute value of negative three is equal to three. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. So, you know, some of you might be saying, well, what does that mean, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Well, let me give you another little example. The absolute value of 3 is also a positive 3. So one more time, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, and the absolute value of 3 is 3. So do you see any patterns here? Well, you might be saying, well, is the absolute value that the absolute value of a negative number is always positive and we just keep the same number? Well, kind of, sort of, but that's not what it means. All right, so the absolute value by definition is the distance a number is from zero on a number line. So let's go ahead and plot out three. One, two, three, so here's three. And then negative three is over here. One, two, three, this is negative three. So here's negative three, here's zero, and here is three. Okay, so let's suppose we had a ruler or a tape measure, and I said, how far is three from a zero on this number line. So we'd go get our little tape measure or ruler, and we would be like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I measured out three units, okay? So three is zero, um, three is three units away from zero on a number line. All right, so that makes sense because distance is a positive concept, right? All right, now how far is negative three from zero on this same number line? 
Well, it's really going to be the same distance, right? But we're just going in the opposite direction. So negative 3 is also 3 units away from 0 on a number line, okay? So the absolute value function is really asking you or saying, hey, how far is this number away from 0 on a number line? So negative 3 is 3 units away, positive 3 units away from 0 on a number line. And 3 is also 3 units away from 0 on a number line. So that is the definition of absolute value. Uh, and uh, one more time, we always want to think of uh, absolute value or distance, excuse me, in terms of being positive. You can have negative distances, but in terms of absolute value, uh, it is positive. Okay, so distance on a number line is positive. Okay, so now uh, what we need to do is figure out what negative 3 minus minus 7 is equal to, and then we'll take the absolute value of that and continue on our merry way in this problem. All right, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So let's focus in inside of the absolute value function. So negative 3 minus minus 7 is what? Well, negative 3 minus minus 7, what you want to do is deal with this subtraction sign. So we don't typically like to subtract uh, positive and negative numbers. What we like to do is turn a subtraction uh, sign into an addition sign. But the negative of a negative right here, okay? Another way to look at the negative sign or subtraction sign is the opposite, okay? So this is the opposite of a negative seven. What is the opposite of a negative seven? I just ask you, just kind of listen to that question. Hey, what's the opposite of a negative seven? Now, if, you, if you're saying, well, isn't a positive seven? You're absolutely right. So the subtraction sign or the negative is also interpreted as opposite in mathematics, but this is really a plus negative and a negative of a negative is like a negative times a negative, which is positive, but it's the opposite of a negative, so it is positive. Now, I really wanted to take my time there and explain this because this is a really confused part of math, but a negative of a negative seven, this right here, we can think of this as a plus seven. So minus minus seven is a positive seven. So now our problem is, negative 3 plus 7. All right, now what is negative 3 plus 7? Well, you can see the answer here is 4. Let me kind of scroll down here a bit. So why is that? Well, let's talk real quick about positive and negative numbers. A good way to think about um, the rules of positive and negative numbers in terms of adding and subtracting is to think of money, okay? So negative money is like you owe someone some money. It is effectively debt, okay? So here, if you owe your friend $3, but you have $7 in your pocket, what happens when you pay back your friend? Because you know they're a good friend, you're gonna pay them back. You're gonna pay back their uh, the $3 that uh, they lent you. So if you owe your, your best friend $3, you have $7. Well, after you give them $3, you have $4 left, positive four, okay? Now let's reverse the situation real quick. Let's suppose it was, three plus a negative seven. Well, what does this mean? Well, it means you have $3 in your pocket, but you owe your friend uh, $7. Well, in this situation, you're like, here, take my whole $3, and now I owe you $4. So uh, three plus negative seven is negative four, but our situation here is negative three plus seven, so the answer is positive four. Okay, so we're almost there, because now that you understand the absolute value function, all we have to do is take the absolute value of a positive 4, which, of course, is what? Well, I'm going to show you the answer in just one second. But first, I'm going to show you this. And that is an invitation to support this YouTube channel. Uh, this YouTube channel is all about trying to make math clear and understandable. Now, I've been teaching math for decades. And one thing that I never uh, did because students didn't like it and they didn't understand it and I didn't like it was just to read you know, uh, verbatim the text in a math book. Now, there's a lot of great math books out there, but I'm not going to uh, describe a problem like, okay, class, we're going to learn about the absolute value function. Now, the absolute value function, blah, 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 because, you know, if I get all esoteric and technical, most people are like, this is so boring. This is why I hate math. You know, that's the whole value of having a teacher is to try to explain things, interpret things, and get people interested in learning the subject. But really, uh, one of the main things I love doing on my uh, channel is giving people encouragement because the number one reason people fail math is because they think they 
cannot be successful in it. This is the number one reason they're like, I'm not smart enough. I'm telling you, you can be successful in math and I'm not patronizing you as well. But it does take work and it does take time. Uh, and most importantly, you need to find someone that is, you know, really qualified in the subject that you want to learn and you need great instruction. OK, so if you, you know, if you're committed to it and you're willing to put in the time and work, but if you don't, you're not getting great instruction, you need to find someone that really teaches you well. So if you're interested in learning uh, math from me, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. Probably the two things I would recommend. Uh, this particular uh, level of math that we're talking about is pre-algebra or my math skills rebuilder course. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem. We are almost there. So we have negative two. Now remember from the PEMDAS standpoint, okay, the order of operations, uh, PEMDAS, you're not done with this P step, the parentheses step until you finish everything inside parentheses. So we're still kind of on that step. All right, so we have negative four plus the absolute value of four. What is the absolute value of four? Well, four, uh, is four units away from zero on the number line. So absolute value of four is four. So now we have negative four plus four, which I think everyone kind of sees this is zero. Okay, so if you, you, owe, you owe someone $4 and you have $4, when you give them your $4, guess what? Uh, you don't have any money, but that's better than being in debt. So now you have negative two times zero. Okay, so now we can go on to finish up the multiplication of this problem, but that's gonna be pretty easy because we have a zero here. So negative two times zero is zero, which of course is our answer. All right, so hopefully you did pretty well with this uh, problem. And even if you did it right and you understood absolute value, uh, you know, from the at least a basic sense of it, you know, hopefully you learned a little bit more about absolute value or maybe some of these other concepts as well. Because a lot of um, people, you know, they can do some of these problems, but they just don't fully understand the concepts. And, uh, you know, what I like to do is to try to take a problem nice and slow and explain these concepts. Because if you understand the concepts really, really well in one problem, that's much better than, you know, not really understanding the concepts and doing like 100 problems. OK, you can do 100 problems in practice you know, the same way and still not really get what's going on. So it's best to slow things down and fully comprehend one problem at a time. OK, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.